Yeah, please uh, go ahead with the second part. Thanks. Um, so now we get what you thought you were coming here for, uh, Grimpner Degeneration and Double Shoebert Polynomials. Um, so I just want to remind everyone what a Grobner basis is. So if we have a, um, a polynomial ring, then we can define the initial ideal is going to be the ideal that is generated by all of the um, largest terms of every polynomial in the ideal I. So um, there is a term order, which is just a way of picking out from any set of, uh, of monomials the biggest one uh, in a con controlled way. Um, so a Grobner basis is a very good generating set for the ideal I. So it's a generating set such that um, if I look at just the, uh, the largest terms of that generating set, I actually get the whole initial ideal. So um, let's take this ideal I and we're gonna take lexicographic monomial order um, where X is biggest than Y than Z than W and uh, everything is homogeneous. So we can just uh, write our, our polynomials. We can just consider the, um, the terms at, like we would in the phone book and take the, uh, the alphabetically first term as the biggest. Um, so for example, but I mean, our phone book has the property that W comes after Z. Um, so in, of course, for any monomial, the monomial is the biggest term of that polynomial. Um, and for this polynomial here, because we're lexing with respect to X, um, X is largest. So X squared is the largest uh, term of that polynomial. This is not a Grobner basis. And one way to see that it's not a Grobner basis is that YW squared is in the ideal I. Um, there it is being a combination of the generators, but YW squared um, is not in the ideal generated by the biggest term of this polynomial and the biggest term of that polynomial. So it turns out though that if you throw in um, just YW squared, now we do have a Grobner basis. So now it is the case that um, for every polynomial in I, the biggest term is divisible by um, X, Y, X, Z, or Y, W squared. Um, so why do we like Grobner bases? Well, one reason is that um, they're very valuable for computations. That once you have a Grobner basis, there's a way to do long division um, and get a definitive yes, no answer is your polynomial in the ideal. So more theoretical reasons why we might like it um, are that if the initial ideal can't be worse than the ideal I. So if the initial ideal is radical or Cohen-Macaulay, then I is radical or Cohen-Macaulay. And the last thing that we'll want to consider is that the Hilbert functions, whether standard graded or multigraded, of R mod I and R mod the initial ideal of I agree. And that's because the, um, the monomials that are not divisible by any of the uh, ge generators of the initial ideal of I, uh, they form a basis both for R mod I and for R mod the initial ideal of I. So when the Hilbert functions agree, um, that tells us that the K polynomials agree and the degrees agree um, and the multi-degrees agree. So in particular, the Schubert polynomials agree. So um, speaking of Schubert polynomials, let's write some down. So um, Bergeron and Billy and Fumin Kirilov um, told us ways to use these things now called uh, pipe dreams to write down double Schubert polynomials. So um, what's a pipe dream? Well, we're going to write the, the numbers one, two, three, four across the top. And then we're gonna trace out um, where each of these pipes comes out on the left. So here we're getting uh, two, one, uh, four, see, huh. four, three. And we would get the same thing if we did the other, uh, the other two permutations. And that tells us that this is um, a pipe dream for two, one, four, three. So pipe dreams are tilings of the grid or what we're allowed are these crossing tiles and these bumping tiles um, when we're above this diagonal. When we're below the diagonal, there's no information and we can just leave it blank. So the set of, um, of tilings subject to those conditions for each permutation gives us a way to read off um, the Schubert polynomial. And the way we do that is we look at these crossing tiles. So for example, um, this cross in position one, one gives us a one, one. 
Um, and this crossing tile at 3-1 gives us a 3-1. And this is one sort of big term of our Schubert polynomial coming from one of the pipe dreams for 2 one, four, three. Similarly, 1-1 uh, one, one and 3-3 three, three gives us 1-1. One, one, let's see, 1-1-2-2 one, one, two, two gives us 1-1-2-2. One, one, two, two. That's our second big term of the double Schubert polynomial coming from um, the second of the pipe dreams. What Knutson and Miller showed was that these combinatorics come from a Grobner degeneration. So if we take a, um, a term order so that the product of terms along the anti-diagonal is the biggest term of any generic uh, minor, then the initial ideal of this Schubert determinantal ideal um, is Z11 times this product here. It has a prime decomposition in terms of these three uh, co-dimension two uh, prime ideals just generated by variables. And this one one is the same as this one one is the same as this one one. And this three one is the same as this three one is the same as this three one. And so it's the prime components of the um, anti-diagonal initial ideal of the matrix Schubert variety um, that are recording the information uh, in the combinatorics, in the algebra, and in the Schubert polynomial. The anti-diagonal degeneration is really good. And one reason why it's really good is that all of these um, initial ideals are radical. So the initial ideals are radical. That means there's they have a Stanley Reasoner complex. The Stanley Reasoner complex is vertex decomposable. Vertex decomposable implies shellable, implies Cohen Macaulay. So the, um, the combinatorics that come from these degenerations are very helpful. More recently, um, there's been a, a theorem of Kanka-Varbro, which is uh, really like my favorite theorem from the past five years, um, which is that we saw, we said before that if a, um, an initial ideal is Cohen Macaulay, then I is Cohen Macaulay. If the initial ideal is radical, actually the converse is true. So if the initial ideal is radical, it cannot be worse in this way. Um, more generally, they showed that the extremal Betty numbers agree, which tells us both that the depth of initial ideal of I is the same as the depth of I, and also that the Casanova Mumford regularity of the initial ideal of I is the same as the Casanova Mumford regularity of I. So if we want to study, um, things like uh, depth and regularity of ASMs by looking at their, um, their decomposition into Schubert's, then the anti-diagonal degeneration is uh, maybe the right one to use, or at least a great one to use. Um, so this is, we're not out there looking for a better degeneration. This is a really good degeneration. But we will look for another one. And um, we'll look for it coming from bumpless pipe dreams. So what is a bumpless pipe dream? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about the road of bumpless pipe dream. So the road of bumpless pipe dream is just, we're going to write down the road of diagram, but we're going to uh, make the, the, the angles kind of bendy so they look like pipes. And then we're allowed to do these things called droop moves. And, um, what is a droop move? Well, we find a rectangle that has um, one downward facing elbow up left, and it has a blank tile um, southeast, and it doesn't have any elbows anywhere in between. And then what we do is we droop by bending the wire in that rectangle. So we're going to bend down into um, this, the blank spot that we found. Um, we can, here's another move we can do. Here is a downward facing elbow. Here is a blank tile. There are no other elbows um, in this area. So we can bend this, this pipe and droop like that. And now we've uh, you know, found a couple of new blank tiles that way. So 
let's see, let's think about a droop we're not allowed to do. So we are not allowed to droop this pipe into that blank spot. And the reason is because we have this other elbow in the rectangle where we drooped. Um, we don't have to sort of droop to the closest thing. We can droop, for example, uh, we can take this pipe and we can droop it all the way down here if we want. And so that looks like, like that. So the set of uh, tilings that we can arrive at, starting from the road of EPD and doing these group moves, this is the complete family of uh, bumpless pipe dreams for uh, the permutation that we started with. Um, anyone else talking about these would define them as a tiling of the n by n grid certain to subject subject to certain conditions. There are a lot of conditions. Um, then it's a theorem due to Lamley and Shimazono that we can get to all of them through droops. But we will just start with the rotobumpless pipe dream and we'll droop. So um, here is the complete set um, of bumpless pipe dreams for 2, 1, 4, 3. And it turned out that we can also read off, um, this is due to Lamley and Shimazono, um, the, uh, the Schubert polynomial, the double Schubert from these combinatorics. So here we have, now we're gonna use the blank tiles. So one, one is this blank tile. Three, three is this blank tile. One, one is this blank tile. Two, one is this blank tile and so on. So now it's the blank tiles that tell us um, how to, to write down the, um, the double Schubert polynomial. So I also have uh, Lascu and Anna up here and that's because, um, Bumpless pipe dreams were really rediscovering um, the six vertex model that, um, that Lascu used and that Anna cleaned up the details for. So these bumpless pipe dreams are new, um, but also they're old. So one thing that we notice is that we've gotten these two formulas for the double Schubert polynomial. So this is the one that we just wrote down from the bumpless pipe dreams. This is the one that we wrote down from the pipe dreams long ago. And you know, if we FOIL and we recollect terms, we can see that indeed these are the same polynomial, but they're not the same polynomial term by term for any way that directly comes from the combinatorics that we can see sort of immediately. Um, so there isn't a way to, um, you know, to find, we don't find this term among any of these three. So, the situation is that there are these two closely related formulas for um, the double Schubert polynomial. They're both coming from these tilings of grids with some squiggles in them. Um, and one of them has this geometry attached to it, this anti-diagonal Grobner geometry. This other one is currently sort of free floating. And at least in, you know, in this small example here, there is a way to attach some geometry to it. And this is by looking at a diagonal degeneration. So now we're going to have, um, we're gonna let Z33 be the biggest term. And it turns out that once we uh, replace this Z11 that should be there with a zero, now we do get on a, a Grobner basis. So these two generators are indeed a Grobner basis for the super determinantal ideal of 2143. And um, the leading term is the product of these three. So now if we take a, um, here's our initial ideal, and we take a, a prime decomposition, then what we're getting um, is that the, uh, this one one is this one one, this three three is that three three, this one one is that one one, this two one is that two one, and so on. So now again, we have that um, the combinatorics and the geometry uh, and the Schubert polynomial are all tracking each other at the same time. And my theorem with Anna um, is that that is in general true. So if we lex from the Southeast, then um, every time we do a step in a Grobner degeneration, and I'll say in a minute what I mean by that, um, then this reflects droop moves in the bumpless pipe dreams. And so once we degenerate all the way down to a monomial ideal, then we get that 
uh, the the prime components of um, that initial ideal count uh, with scheme theoretic multiplicity because we don't necessarily have radical ideals, um, the bumpless pipe dreams of W. So um, here's what that looks like an example. And this is actually true for arbitrary intersections of Schubert determinantal ideals. So we can get uh, some repetition with a smaller example here. So here we have um, this one bumpless pipe dream um, for W1 for 213. And we have two bumpless pipe dreams for 132. This one is contributing uh, Z11, because that's the only blank tile. This one is contributing Z22 and Z11. So we should have two copies of Z11 and one copy of Z22. And indeed, um, the initial ideal is Z11 squared Z22. So um, I said steps in, in a Grobner degeneration. So those steps are going to be geometric vertex decomposition. So what does that mean? Um, this means we're going to take a polynomial ring. We're going to designate one of the variables as largest. And we're going to do a partial Grobner degeneration. So um, here is a, a generating set that we're going to declare by fiat um, as a Grobner basis for our ideal. And we're going to weight the y's with 1 and all of the other variables with 0. We then take the highest weight term or set of terms um, in any polynomial. And these may be monomial, but they don't have to be. For example, um, for any polynomial that doesn't involve y at all, we're going to get the entire polynomial um, as, oopsie, in our initial ideal here. So this is the ideal of initial y forms, where y is weight one, everything else is weight zero. So um, we have these ideals, c and n, that will play the role of link and deletion in a vertex decomposition. So the ideal of the deletion is just all of the Grobner generators that don't involve y. The ideal of the link is all of the Grobner generators that don't involve y, together with this coefficient of y. And this coefficient is anything in uh, any polynomial that doesn't involve y. So um, theorem due to Knudsen miller yang is that the ideal of initial y forms decomposes as this ideal of the link intersect the ideal of the deletion um, plus n, sorry, plus y. These um, ideals have a, um, have a co-dimension relation that mirrors the, um, the size of maximal faces in a vertex decomposition. So everything about this in terms of size looks like a vertex decomposition. So they use this in studying vexillary matrix Schubert varieties. Um, here's one quick example. So this is the ideal of two by two minors in a generic two by three matrix. Um, and we're gonna take Z23, which is the Southeast term. We're gonna take it to be largest. So the ideal of initial Y forms um, is this polynomial that doesn't involve Z23 at all, together with um, the, any polynomial that does involve the D23, we're going to take the D23 part of it. This decomposes um, into this ideal coming from these coefficients of Z23 and this ideal coming from the polynomial that doesn't use Z23 at all, together with Z23 itself. In a monomial example, um, a geometric vertex decomposition is just a vertex decomposition of the associated simplicial complex. So how are droop moves instances of geometric vertex decomposition? So here's our example, our nice small example, 2143 again. And here is um, the Grobner basis that we saw before, uh, just written out, um, for 2143. And we're going to do a geometric vertex decomposition with respect to Z33. So the the ideal of the deletion is going to be the only polynomial that doesn't involve Z33 at all, together with Z33. And the ideal of the link is coming from um, these coefficients of Z33, uh, together with the polynomial that doesn't involve Z33 at all. So that's just the, the pure algebra geometric vertex decomposition. Up in the bumpless pipe dreams, we consider two cases. 
So one case is that Z33 is a blank tile in the bumpless pipe dream. It turns out that's just this one. And just this one um, gives us uh, the ideal of the deletion. And every time we do a droop move, we uncover a new tile. And when we uncover a new tile, um, that is giving us one of these variables here because we, it turns out we're already monomial. But the second case is that this tile here is not a blank tile in the bumpless pipe dream. And if this blank tile is not a blank tile, then the only option for it is to be um, an upward facing elbow, because that's how the droop moves work, is if you start life as a blank tile, you can get drooped into, but then you're stuck. So um, these, two, these two bumpless pipe dreams here, these are determining the ideal of the link. So how do we do this in a way that gives us more bumpless pipe dreams and therefore more Schubert determinantal ideals? Um, so once we do a droop move, we can then sort of straighten out the bumpless pipe dream by uncrossing um, these, these wires here by putting in a cross there. And what we get is um, a bumpless pipe dream for a different permutation of the same Coxeter length whose blank tiles have moved northwest. So the ideal of the deletion um, is another Schubert determinantal ideal. It's a Schubert determinantal ideal of a permutation that's Coxeter length one smaller. This um, CYI, this is an ASM. And this ASM has the decomposition um, into, so this is the perm A. So it decomposes into an intersection of Schubert determinantal ideals of the same height. And those Schubert determinantal ideals are the ones that we get from straightening out these group moves there. So we get an ASM that we can decompose into uh, Schubert's whose essential cells are farther Northwest. And we get the deletion, which is um, coming from a Schubert of Coxeter length one smaller. So we have an induction in two different senses. So we have these three recurrences. Um, we start with a Schubert determinantal ideal. And we're going to take a lower outside corner, so an essential box um, that's as far south and east as we can get. And we do a geometric vertex decomposition. This geometric vertex decomposition splits, um, gets us partway towards the initial ideal of I. And it's splitting us into link and deletion, where link is an ASM. And um, it, it splits as an intersection into somehow easier um, Schubert's. The deletion is another Schubert at a smaller Coxeter length. On the BPDs, what we're doing is we're canceling that box, that lower outside corner, and so we're splitting the BPDs into ones that have Y as a box and ones that don't. And there's also Lascaux's transition formula, which is a purely combinatorial um, splitting that reflects both of these transitions, uh, both of these uh, splittings above. So that was the story for when we start with one um, Schubert. As we go through the induction, the way that we're getting multiplicity, the thing that becomes harder um, is that once we, we want to apply induction to this case, but we have an intersection of Schubert's, and when we take the link um, of, this, of this ASM, um, we're not necessarily radical. And that's where we have to take radical uh, and, and record um, how many copies of things we're getting. So um, returning to our, our example here, let's take a geometric vertex decomposition um, of this polynomial at Z22. So there are no polynomials that don't involve Z22. So uh, this N is just the zero ideal. And this link is the coefficient of Z22. So this is Z11 squared. So our geometric vertex decomposition is giving us link and deletion plus Y, which in this case is just Y. Um, and this again is our two copies of Z11 and our one copy of Z22. So I've said that, the, that we like ASMs, we want to know if they're Cohen-Macaulay, 
And I've also said that the anti-diagonal degeneration is really, really good for a lot of applications. And so this diagonal degeneration, one feature of it is that as we pass through these CYJ, we're passing through um, ASMs that we don't yet understand, but would like to. And so um, one thing that we get from looking at this diagonal degeneration is we get to start studying um, which ASMs are our Cohen Macaulay. So if uh, we have R equal to one, if we just have um, J is one Schubert determinantal ideal, and we take a geometric vertex decomposition, we're going to get one ASM here. And this ASM um, is necessarily Cohen Macaulay. So um, I want to end with uh, one example um, to, to give some intuition for why we're studying the initial ideals and not Grobner bases directly. And that's because um, the Grobner basis itself actually does depend on the order. So I said, you know, Lex from Southeast, but a couple of choices we can make, or we can, you know, prioritize going over rows first, or we can prioritize going up columns first. And those two different uh, different choices that are both reasonably described as Lex from Southeast um, actually give us two different Grobner bases, um, even for uh, 214365. So these have the same, um, the same associated primes, and they have each associated prime, or sorry, they have each minimal prime with the same multiplicity. The multiplicities manifest a little bit differently. This one, the multiplicity is manifesting with a square on Z21. Here, the multiplicity is manifesting with a square on Z12. Um, they also um, can have, so if we take a flat degeneration of an equidimensional variety, we get something that's still equidimensional, but it can have embedded primes. And so as we go through these diagonal degenerations, we really can end up with initial ideals that have embedded primes. And the number of embedded primes um, is not consistent um, over uh, which of these uh, Lex from Southeast term orders we pick. So for this permutation here, um, if we take these two different uh, diagonal term orders that are both Lex from Southeast, um, we can end up with, uh, we do end up with different numbers of, of embedded primes. So this is really a, um, a theorem about um, initial ideals rather than Grobner bases. And it's really about the, the components, um, meaning the, the top dimensional components, and does not capture um, the, the information that we would like to throw away from the standpoint of intersection theory. Because when we're doing intersection theory, components of the wrong dimension, including embedded ones, uh, don't contribute. So this theorem is about initial ideals and it is about multiplicities. Um, so I will stop there. Yeah, let's thank uh, the speaker for very